peace and blessings. It's your boy, James Anthony. And as we learn together, we define limitless. Through networking, we're able to leverage each other's unique abilities, skills, and God-given talents. Embracing that divine spark, we access the quantum field. And we realize that a point of power is in the present moment, a true gift from the most high. I want to start off by saying this is not financial advice, nor am I a financial advisor. This is just a rare opportunity that needs to be shared and highlighted because so few researchers are sharing this information. Shout out to JTXRP as well as Chaos Dobbs for highlighting this incredible ecosystem where not only can you create a daily passive income that you can compound, but also multiple bi-weekly passive income streams that you can compound all while the assets don't leave your custody. Now let that sink in for a second. Unfortunately, we are in some very dangerous times. And for me, that means it calls for some serious measures. I've only been in this ecosystem a few months and during the conditions we've all witnessed as of late, you would think not so fruitful. But I have to be honest, it's very much the opposite. I'm not saying that to brag or boast. I'm just simply highlighting the facts. Patrick Riley, who's the CEO of Reaper Financial, has a very ambitious plan and has agreed to sit down and chat with me every week to go over what's happening in real time. So without further ado, what's going on, big bro? Can you introduce yourself and just briefly go over what Reaper is, how it works, and for maybe viewers who are checking in for the first time, they can get a little understanding. Hi, James, and thank you. So Reaper is Reaper Financial, and there's also Reaper Token. Uh, Reaper Financial has a suite of services that are different blockchain tokens. Currently, uh, RPR or Reaper itself, which goes out and buys and destroys other cryptocurrencies based on a working blockchain voting mechanism. And with that, we pay passive income in XRP. We also have Ascension, which is our second product. Uh, <laughs> we, we launched Ascension early November. And with that, you are able to uh, earn a suite of about 12 different assets, including Reaper, uh, StakeX, XR Doge, Zoge, uh, Schmeckles, Treasury, uh, Additions, Strategy Engine, many more. Uh, so. Basically, these are all a basket of assets, digital assets that have been vetted against a very high standard. And through that high standard, we are uh, comfortable to go out and purchase these at market and then distribute them to the holders of Ascension token. Our, our third product, ARC token, will be launching in the end of December. and. We're not yet revealing what the primary utility of it is, but the secondary uh, passive income of it will be a 25% distribution in Reaper token and a 25% distribution in Ascension token uh, purchased at market based off the sales of ARC. And we're not yet revealing what the primary utility of it is, but the secondary uh, passive income of it will be a 25% distribution in Reaper token and a 25% distribution in Ascension token uh, purchased at market based off the sales of ARC. Wow. That that's a perfect segue for, you know, what I wanted to um, go into next. I mean, this arc thing, I wanted to ask, was this part of the original plan that you guys had, or was it something that was added, added later on? So there was always a capacity for this utility. And we, we always planned on a, a trinity of tokens, a, a three primary sectors of the market. Reaper was first because it was able to build organically from uh, reaping just one token with a, a non-blockchain vote on Twitter to uh, launching the blockchain voting and reaping many tokens and then uh, adding in the drip and the drip stimulus. And we were able to really evolve Reaper into a proof of concept that allowed room for these other two uh, tokens that meet other needs to come into the ecosystem. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I I get the the strategy. I mean, it's like it's like you guys are grassroots developing a loyal, commu you know, community of holders that 
understand the tokenomics and it's like grassroots. So it's like from the, from the ground up. That's why I asked you if you guys, um, you know, had plans initially, or is this something that came later? Yeah. So we're definitely long-term planners. We have plans that are as far as 10 years out right now. And, uh, we, we plan on things that are going to affect global strategic, uh, operations for, uh, countries and, you know, the BRICS and the Federal Reserve. So we are not thinking small. We are deploying and we are building. Amen. So somebody said the smart contracts for the token. Basically, I'm curious about the code that handles the, dis, uh, the distributions. And you said something along the lines of, ah, yes, ah, yes, we won't be publishing the code for legal security and strategic reasons. We've already had bad actors attempt to impersonate us. And there is much more that goes into this than simply plugging in the code. They would end up harming people if it were if it were really public, fully public. We have had a uh, imposter um, come along that attempted a few months back to basically steal our version two white paper and, and name it uh, something else and put it on a Cosmos blockchain. And wow. it didn't go well for them. Uh, they were served documents pretty hastily. Um, nice. And they've ceased and desisted uh, those operations. But the, the reality is Reaper's mechanisms where we have burnt uh, over half a million XRP worth of value in uh, under a year. It's mm -hmm. probably considerably higher than that right now. Last time I, I took a full inventory. Um, so the reality is we don't make that much in revenue. We bring in far less than what we are actually burning and destroying. And for that reason, there is absolutely no chance that any company that comes in and copies our model and steals it would be able to maintain the integrity to serve the customers in the same way because yeah. it's already an oxymoron uh, past that for us to go and uh, burn debt the way that we're going to be executing it there are additional licenses and securities and personal financial data and full KYC. It's not just something, you know, you can, you know, stumble into and deploy on a blockchain and, and do anonymously and, and hope you're good. This is not a, um, we, we're not messing around. This is not a joke. We are here to deploy a true uh, financial ecosystem and it's not something to be wielded lightly. Yeah, no, no, I agree. Absolutely. It's just not sustainable. The way you guys are doing it is is strategic in the fact that, you know, if this court case were to fall as if XRP was a security, you guys not taking any of the revenue throughout this past year plays a role in the way that you would move forward. No, am I wrong? That's correct. If for any reason Reaper Financial was to be forced to close, we would have the uh, permanent drip fund to distribute to all reaper token holders not that that's going to happen in any way because this is very strategic in the way that this whole thing has been worked out i mean initially i thought this was a very different project and the more that i lurk and the more that i research the more that i dig in i see there's such a a, a larger um perspective there's such a larger role you guys are playing and it is 100 global i could see that now i didn't see that at first you know last year when i first saw reaper on the scene i was like meme on oh, another meme token here we go right but the more that i paid attention the more i saw you guys under promise and over deliver and that's strategic as well i could see that this is not it's not a game what's going on here definitely not a game it's okay Correct. Our model of increasing circulation has proven more effective than traditional black holing. This is called business myopia. And the black hole concept is the reason even some good projects fail. A financial product doesn't work without cash flow. Luckily for good projects out there, becoming a hard slot. Yeah. So business myopia is a term coined by uh, Ted Levitt back in 1950s. He was a Harvard economist who basically what he's talking about there is that it's a narrow tunnel vision that businesses will get in which they're unable to see the changing forces around them. 
uh, with blockchain and cryptocurrency, even though it's a new industry, it's only been out since you know, 2008, 2009, since the, the initial days of you know, Bitcoin. Yeah. In, in that 13 years, we've already seen a lot of myopia. And that's probably from inexperience and a large number of people in this space who are not a uh, business background or do not uh, understand the dynamics of economics um, and the forces at work. But effectively, even the largest companies, even the the top 50 companies in the world are probably only going to live 40 to 50 years. And that's because business myopia. With cryptocurrency, what we've seen is because Satoshi Nakamoto was anonymous and because there was this uh, mining and these, uh, these other things factored into that, we've seen a lot of uh, other companies come along and try to copy the secret sauce that came from Bitcoin, which was the mining, which was the anonymity or sometimes the fixed supply. Those things are not actually good practice. Bitcoin was a great design as far as code. It was a terrible design as far as uh, finance. Yeah. Um, so if you don't have cash flow, which is what we have by the sale of tokens, you know, f per month, the one million tokens, you don't have any ability to affect the direction of your business in a positive manner. You're not building anything. You're just hoping to uh, get enough people who are essentially suckers to come in and buy your token on speculation. Yeah. And you're hoping that they drive the price up enough that your limited supply you have to sell is going to then net you enough cash to make it last a little bit longer. And that's effectively what most cryptocurrencies are, is, is it's already black hole that's already dead. It can't grow, so it's already shrinking. Wow. Um, even if the price is going up, that doesn't mean that it's not dying. Um, so with what we've done, we've created a model where we are creating cash flow and demand, and we're uh, at the same time uh, diminishing other supplies as is needed while, you know, fighting the stagnation with ascension. Are there any, yeah, no doubt about it. Are there any other projects that you know of that, that have a similar model? I've never seen anything else. There is nothing else like us. Uh, and I don't think there will be for a little while until we really start to hit the mainstream. And uh, at, at that point, a, a lot will come out to copy us. Um, I will say, and this this isn't financial advice, but it, it is, um, you know, a truth is that uh, most projects that are out there that are not black hold are extremely dangerous. And uh, if they're not black hold and they're not giving up the ability to freeze, for example, uh, not XR Doge, but XR Doge Classic has the ability to freeze and they uh, they go out and freeze people's funds who are just trying to sell. 50 XRP worth, uh, you know, to buy some food. And so things like that are extremely um, unethical and dangerous. So you wow. should be aware of those and stay away from them. Uh, but at the same time, on the, the opposite side of that, to play devil's advocate, yeah, almost all projects that have more than 10% of the total circulating supply of their token could do the exact same thing as a non black hole project, right? So if there's a hundred million uh, tokens out there and we have only 10 million, that 10 million is probably enough to clear the entire liquidity of the cryptocurrency. Sure. So while Reaper isn't black hole, I mean, the, the reality is we are no more of a, a threat or a danger of um, clearing that liquidity than any other project that is black hole. But you have to look at the the people behind the project. Anytime you invest or you buy into a project, you're buying into the people running that project and what yeah. their principles and their morals and their ethics are. Yeah, and unfortunately, in this in this you know in the current climate, like the current conditions, a lot of people are scared. Man, they're scared to put their money in. They're scared to to reinvest because of how many people just lost with the Sam Bankman Freed debacle. You know, by the grace of the divine creator, the XRP ledger, you know, 
has pretty much gone unscathed with, you know, with the exception of, you know, coming down a little bit, like nobody was directly affected by that. Right. Well, I mean, and that's the benefit to being a niche of a niche market is uh, we are not necessarily as uh, affected by the macro uh, market as much of everyone else. Yeah. Scary stuff. I mean, I, I, I say that to say, you guys have a motto that's super transparent in a way that, you know, people can see what's going on, like where the money's going, what it's going for, who it's getting distributed to. And it's just, it's such a rarity to be, uh, to find the project with this much transparency. Like I'm in the process currently, you know, full transparency. I have a heavy bag, right? I'm in the process currently of consolidating all the other ones that I've just been holding forever and a day with hopes that one day they'll go up again. You know, most of the money has been made already. I mean, unless you're in a project that is being full blown transparent with everything that they're doing, you're really gambling at this stage of the game. You're really gambling. Yeah. There's definitely a difference between gambling and investing. And I know treasury talks did a, uh, a space on that. Unfortunately, I, I wasn't able to make it, yeah. but if, uh, you know, if the projects that you're putting your money into aren't taking your money seriously and understanding that it is truly, uh, you know, your livelihood and your well-being that they are responsible for, you should stay far away from it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. The more that I um, delve into Reaper, the more that I, you know, understand when I first came into the space, man, I was all over the place. I mean, I bought a little bit of everything just, just so that I didn't miss, you know what I mean? And you you uh you slowly learn wallen said well if you look at the trust line it says there are 100 million tokens but like rpr and asc it's not black hole that's just what we were just talking about so we have to assume more will be created to serve its utility same as rpr and asc yeah shout out exactly Mm -hmm. oh this is a good one yeah this was about the um farmer stuff Michael said, I don't mind the anti-farmer feature, but I hope I can get a clear answer on what happens if you have four accounts. Only two of those I've set to trust line. Do I need to remove one of them to get an airdrop at all? Do I need to create an account with no child accounts? Now let's just let's 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 stop right there and let's just go into that. So ARC, what's the distribution or what can you release to us? What can you you know tell us about ARC? So RPR holders who have more than 500 RPR in their wallet will each receive 1,000 ARC. ASC or Ascension holders who each have more than 500 Ascension will receive 1,000 ARC. And those who have neither RPR nor Ascension and have only the trust line will receive 1000 ARC. So with that, a person who has a uh, Reaper and Ascension and the trust line should receive 3000 ARC throughout the airdrop process. So we set uh, basically on 24,000 uh, Reaper trust lines with 7,200. Um, we rounded up to 8,000 Ascension trust lines. So we're looking at 32,000 trust lines between the two if they were completely separate. And then we also, uh, we calculate that out to 32 million ARC. So with that, we want to distribute roughly 80 million ARC. And that means that we need another um, uh, about 40 to uh, 50,000 trust lines. So we, uh, we set our target at 60,000 so that uh, basically what this does is we're going to have people who have no exposure to ARC uh, or ASC or Reaper, and they're going to be receiving Reaper and ASC as their passive income. And with Reaper, they're going to receive the drip in XRP. And with Ascension, they're going to be receiving the Ascension reign of a dozen other tokens. And so that is going to give them the uh, exposure to our ecosystem so that we can grow a larger community and uh, through a different means and a different purpose uh, than what our community currently focuses on. What happens to, so how many will be minted? 100 million in total? So right now we've minted 100 million. There'll be the similar model to Ascension and Reaper where we will sell 1 million ARC per month at market uh, divided by the number of sales per month. And then uh, those funds will be 25% 
for the purchase of Reaper at market uh, airdrop to ARC holders and 25% for the purchase of Ascension at market airdrop to Ascension holders, or excuse me, to ARC holders. Um, so this will uh, be a, a strong passive income uh, token, just as Ascension and uh, Reaper are. However, it's also going to serve a, another purpose that right now is greatly lacking in cryptocurrency and business in general. And uh, it will address a trust issue that is uh, caused by the, the elements like Sam Bankman Fried and uh, others out there in the ecosystem. Wow. So, with the debacle that just transpired, the utility behind ARC will actually address that in some specific way trust as far as trust goes yes it will wow that's all you can give us at the moment that that's all i'm going to give you for right now <laughs> so let's repeat that again though the 25 and 25 because that's news for everybody else right. who's in the community can you can you go over that one more time how that's going to work so as we sell the 1 million arc tokens per month 25% of the proceeds from the sale will purchase RPR at market price. That RPR will be distributed to ARC holders and 25% will purchase Ascension at market price and be distributed to ARC holders. So ARC holders are going to be Reaper and Ascension holders. Uh, and the reason we didn't do the one for one this time, the way we did with Ascension is because the purpose of this token is outside of the regular bounds of Reaper or Ascension. And so it's going to have its own socials, its own website, and basically its own community. But everyone in that community will also be a part of the Reaper and Ascension community. It's sort of like a grandfathered in situation because we are part of the community. We have the ability to take part in, in, the, in the new utility. Absolutely. Awesome. Okay. So what's this grandfather uh, account situation? I've seen a few people in the telegram being concerned, uh, having, uh, voicing their concerns about this grandfather, I mean, parent and child account for some wallets. Can you kind of go over that a little bit? Yep. So the way it works on the XRP ledger is if the accounts were founded by another uh, Exum or decentralized self-custodial wallet where the original 10XRP sent to fund that wallet uh, came from a, a different decentralized wallet. Basically, the new wallet becomes a child wallet of the original. And uh, the way that we combat scammers or uh, airdrop farmers is to limit the number of children wallets that are going to be permitted to receive the airdrop. So basically when our tool goes out and scans who's going to receive the ARC, it's going to say, okay, this 200 wallets over here is connected to more than 10 child wallets each. And so they're not going to receive anything. Uh, and everyone else who has just one or two, maybe three or four children wallets, they will get it. Uh, but it's pretty easy to tell the difference between a farmer who is going to have, you know, probably tens, dozens, maybe hundreds of wallets wow. uh, versus somebody who has three or four. So yeah. we'll look at the ones that are close to the line and we'll try to determine if they're malicious or not malicious. And then we'll proceed with their drop. Yeah. When, when I, when I read that, I myself did a check because I've, I've never even heard that concept before. I didn't even know that there are parent and child accounts. So I did a check and I think I, there was about 15 accounts underneath mine, but myself personally, I don't use any, I've never done anything with another Sum wallet. So these are probably all people that I've helped start accounts. I've gifted people some, so on and so forth. I, I know you'll be able to tell whether or not an account is a farming account because you can tell by the transactions and the kind of activity that they have. So exactly. I mean, if, if you're looking to be malicious, this is for anybody out there. If you're looking to be malicious, believe you me, you could get away with it the first time, but what's done in the dark always comes to the light. To quote uh, XR Jenna, there's no lies on the blockchain. Yeah. Shout out to XR Jenna. I like her content. So Live Free says, would be nice if we had a verification on how many children accounts would be allowed. Don't want to be tagged as a farmer, but I certainly have two children. Ha 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 ha. 
So yeah, we kind of adjust that already. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not going to put the exact number out. The reason for yeah, that is, is simply because there'll be people who hear that number and go, oh, okay, I need to go start new wallets. So uh, we'll analyze the wallets as we find ones that are problematic and we'll make a determination. What 9 to 5 Freedom says is maybe I misunderstood part of what you're saying here. Not sure if you're saying you've invested too much or regretting you didn't buy more. I hope it's not the former, but if that is the case, you are in a good place. If there's anywhere I don't mind being over invested in right now, it's here. Reaper doesn't care about the bear market and is planning to put an end to the major bear market crashes of the future. Investing is a journey and there's a lot to learn, but it's one of the most important things to learn, yet not taught in the formal education setting. I love to learn and question everything. Don't trust, verify. Trust is a dirty word to me. Dirty, dirty word, man. Dirty word. Uh, and this is this is another cool statement by um, nine to five. The cool thing is that Patrick answers most everything directly with the community when he can. I just try to ask a lot of things that I know would be valuable to put on a video. Huh? I'm just here trying to help build this community and spread the knowledge as well. So many intelligent folks in here, but this thing moves fast and can be tough to keep up with. I spend a lot of time keeping close to Reaper as I can see the writing on the wall. This thing is going to be big. I love that. I love comments like that because it's just, it's just the truth. I mean, initially getting involved, you see it as one thing and then you start understanding the way you know, money works, velocity and trust. People just have no idea what's going down with the XRP ledger. They think it's just one token. Meanwhile, it's just this incredible ecosystem of fantastic projects. One of the most important ones, in my opinion, is Reaper. It's definitely Reaper. By the way I built my model, I actually get to basically teach people good financial disciplines and the way that things should be run or should work. I, I get to teach them about supply and demand and market elasticity, the, the basic fundamentals of money that uh, people don't get in grade school and, and don't get from their parents, unfortunately. Um, and I, I'm going to reiterate for the probably millionth time I plug this guy and I'm not endorsed by him in any way, shape or form. Uh, but go and read Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki, and it will help you understand exactly why my model is built the way it is. Yeah, and I'll tell you what else. Um, I know there's a lot of patriots out there that are fully under the assumption that, you know, trust the plan, right? They didn't go out and vote. They're not, they're, they're maxing their credit cards out because they think there's going to be a reset and everybody's just going to get free money. Right. And the debt's going to go away. And I, uh, I implore people to understand that although there may be some kind of a plan in place, you have to be responsible with what you're doing. Okay. You, you don't just go out and max a credit card because you, you heard somewhere that there's going to be a reset and all your debts are going to be wiped because this financial economy is built on debt 10 to one. Am I, am I wrong, Patrick? You're not wrong at all. And uh, I had this conversation with Mel Carmine uh, about a week ago uh, regarding uh, the Patriot problem. And the problem with Patriots is the, they're onto something and they know they're onto something, but they have to raise their burden of proof. Um, you know, out of the millions of patriots, about 10% of them are, are hitting the nail on the head and the other 90% are, are swinging and missing. And it's, it's great that they believe the things they do and it's great that they want the things that they want, but uh, you know, raising your burden of proof or more importantly, when you think something needs to be a certain way, go out and make it happen. Don't don't wait. Don't expect a plan. Don't uh, put your faith in things that cannot deliver. Um, and you simply don't know if they ever will go out and make it happen. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that wholeheartedly. If you see if you're doing something and paying attention to small detail and you see something is missing, instead of going to someone and complaining, fill that spot, 
fill that spot yourself or figure out who can and go to them and and encourage them to do it because it's every, it's almost every day that I run into somebody that you know would rather not get involved in these little ecosystems you know I, I say little because it's little in comparison to the global stage but they don't understand that a lot of what we know is coming starts with these little ecosystems and these little ecosystems when you become a foundational member of this ecosystem, then you get a stake in the network and you get to say how things are going to go or at least have your voice. Then you get a stake in the network and you get to say how things are going to go or at least have your voice be heard. Sanctuary for Elijah down at the brook. Uh -huh. And there allowed him to lay in the cool shade and drink from the brook of the 